Well, I'll tell you, it's more than just black and white photography that's a mystery to me. <laughs> but, uh, I told my son that uh, my plan for tonight was to tell the truth. And I feel like I'm waking from a long, disquieted sleep. And uh, I've been terrified my whole life. For six and a half decades, it's been one incessant shriek of existential terror. <laughs> this terror comes from three questions. What is this? And what is this? And what is this place? What is this world? I've used a camera to, uh, to mediate these questions. And uh, it's, a, it's a box with one lens in it to, uh, to serve this box with two lenses in it, you know, to, to deal with this terror. And uh, if I know anything for sure, it's because I photograph. Man, I never thought saying I was terrified would get a laugh. <laughs> wow. Photograph, so it gets two laughs. I, uh, a photographic uh, perception is a pulse. It's a, it's a constant movement between, between a large view and a, and a small view, between the general and the specific, the detail. And I've learned to see the general, the wide view, by changing my focus, that is softening my focus. So I don't... I don't see one thing acutely sharp. I see everything equally unsharp. And this allows me then not to focus on objects, but to have a sense of, of, of shape, geometry, tonality, uh, texture, and the, the balance the, and the harmony between these elements. And what I get from this is a direct experience of essential beauty, a beauty that's independent of object, of idea, of feeling, uh, uh, heroes and villains. It's, it's the beauty that... Uh, geez. It's a beauty that f holds detail. It's, uh, and the detail is, details are the emotional, the psychological, the gestural. And this beauty is, is uh, the foundation and the background for these details. It's a feeling that holds the detail. When I'm, uh, how, do, how I see the detail is by quieting myself. I, uh, I've, I then seek this quiet and this stillness in others. And this is how I understand the native North American hunters would prepare themselves to hunt. <clears throat> they meditate on their own true natures. This sensitizes them. This uh, makes them vulnerable to being known and to being seen. And this sensitizes them to the, uh, the animal that they seek and the nature of the animal they seek. The hunter and the animal then meet, they recognize their roles, and they give themselves to one another. I then look for um, the subtleties of change in, in, in these details. When does breathing in change to breathing out? When does uh, indecision uh, change to uh, activity, action? And these are these subtle transitions, these uh, Transitional moments are man, man. 
I mean, this is what I do every day, and, you know. Uh, these transitional moments are what stabilize and reinforce the, the stillness in time. And the, the frame fixes the detail in space. Photographs are taken in fractions of a second. The longer the fraction of the second, the more body aware I am. The more, uh, the, the more I'm aware of that my body is constantly moving, swaying, that it's more difficult to hold the camera steady, to release the, the uh, shutter smoothly. Uh, when I synchronize, when I, uh, oh, the longer these fractions of seconds, the more aware I am of your movement. And when I synchronize with your, your movement, your swing, then I'm better able to hold this camera steady. And when I synchronize with your blinking, there are no more closed eyes. And much like uh, when, uh, when you get those shocks where there's, where you, re oh my goodness, when you have the, your entire life flash in front of you, in a quarter of a second, I can relive my entire life. And in a half a second, uh, one second, it's as though I'm Ezekiel piercing that firmament. That, poking into a completely unknown, unexperienced universe. And I was thinking about this uh, today, that this process seems to me to be a, uh, a, a magic trick, a spectacular magic trick, to where the whole process is me experiencing it internally and then me showing you the rabbit. So when I go uphill, sometimes I photograph trees. Oh, my time's running out. I photograph trees, and uh, it's always so quiet when I do that. And uh, I use the same approach as I do when I'm approaching people, but it's always so quiet, and I realize that it's because people are always chattering. And it's not the mouth, it's not the mouth that roars kind of chatter, but it's that internal monologue that's always running. Uh, the one that shows itself in uh, nervous gestures and the inability to listen and... Uh, uh, you know, eventually it shows up as a coating, a tension that, that keeps the body together. And uh, a, a fellow once described me as being zippy, and he was, he was recognizing my kind of chatter. And I, I, I see uh, coffee drinkers' chatter as very sh sharp and jagged, and uh, long-time coffee drinkers' chatter is uh, more like a series of speed bumps. But, uh, and then, then there's the uh, uh, New Age theologians uh, chatter, which is furry. <laughs> uh, I've had, uh, can I do this in a minute? I've had the, uh, the privilege to sit with people and photograph people in, on their deathbeds. And uh, I was sitting uh, while well, Bill was uh, napping, and his, I was sitting with his wife, whose name I've forgotten, and she was thanking me profusely for photographing Bill. She said that when you're old, you're ignored, and when you're old and sick, you're invisible. And uh, this struck me as being the, the, my role as the photographer. I'm witnessing your life. I'm the witness to your existence. And uh, also brought up uh, something that there are three unacknowledged and ill-used food groups, the tubies. Uh, to be touched, to be heard, and to be seen. And finally, I feel ri rich, I feel wealthy beyond queens and despots when I hold rolls of, uh, of unexposed film in my hands for the potential that's there, for the challenge to be uh, fully present, awake, receptive, courageous, to be enthusiastically curious, to, to uh, for uh, opening to beauty and for being vulnerable, and through the bellowing cacophony of things and the 
consensual misunderstanding of freedom and all the fractions of seconds and in a body that feels and shrieks, all the photographing and aligning and receiving and courage drives me right into life's essential paradox. No thing is. Something comes from nothing. Everything comes from no thing. And it's going right back there. And there is no there. Everything is here. There is no afterlife, but for the idea of afterlife. And that's here. And there's no other place than this place. The ball is round, the game lasts 90 minutes. This is true. Everything else is pure theory. There you are. That's for you.